welcome to the 2021 Street Parking Vault. The Street Parking Vault is a one workout a week for 25 week series with the goal to help street parking members build consistency. This, however, is the beginning of round two. If you have done this before, this is your opportunity to retest the workouts or try a different version. Customize these movements and choose a version that fits your ability. Your scores and weights don't matter. The goal is to maintain consistency from week to week. You just can't miss. If this is your first time doing this workout, click on the link below, which will take you to the original version that breaks down all of the customizations, tips, as well as all the different versions of the workout. All right, guys, it's time again for Gaia. And as always, whether you're choosing to exercise your fitness freedom and do a different piece of equipment for this workout, or you're trying to see if you can improve your score, here are my tips for Gaia. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this workout surprised me and was much harder than I expected it to be. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is try to remember which movement got you. For many, many of us, I would say most of us, it was the combination of the push-ups and the shoulder to overhead. So just keep that in mind as you head in the second time. My challenge for you, because the push-ups did slow down so many of us, is to push the pace on the deadlift and squat portion, knowing that you're gonna be able to catch your breath a little bit during the breaks that you're taking on the push-ups. Now, if you were under 15 minutes in this workout, this means that you have an opportunity to increase the weight that you're using or change some of the other customizations that you might have made. If you did all the push-ups from your knees, for example, maybe at least try starting out with push-ups from your toes. Even if you don't make it the whole way through, that would be a great thing to see how far you can get. If you were over 19 minutes, I would encourage you to maybe make some choices for different customizations, lighter weight, knee push-ups, elevated push-ups, or if you want to, go ahead and just try again and see if you can get within that goal range. My challenge for everyone on this one is to, once again, keep break those push-ups up wherever you need to, but keep those breaks short. Try to keep them to two or three breaths at the most, and then try to do those front squats in no more than two or maybe three sets. Now, if you did shift last time, but you're not quite feeling ready to do the full program A, my challenge for you would be to do a little bit of a hybrid of shift and program A together. So do the program A movements within the shift rep scheme. So you're gonna be doing squats with two dumbbells this time, push press with two dumbbells, and power cleans from the ground, keeping the way that the workout flows the same as the way that it's written for shift. Okay, you guys, welcome back. Week two, week 27, if you wanna look at it that way. Uh, Gaia, I am going to be doing the barbell. I used the barbell last time. I'm doing the same workout, same amount of weight. Honestly, happy to just be doing it again, but I am going to try and go a little bit faster this time. And he's off. Nicole, what was his score last time? Since today, Jeb is going, trying to shoot for performance, it sounds like. Um, his score last time was 12.48. Okay. All right, sounds good. So remember guys, Gaia, the mother of the gods, is 60 deadlifts, 60 air squats, 60 push-ups, 30 power clean, 30 front squat, 30 shoulder to overhead. I remember doing this one. It's a lot of movements. It was a good time. I really, really enjoyed this chipper workout. Um, Nicole, what, what, uh, what do you remember from it? Um, I remember the push-ups. Oh, wow. The push-ups for me were brutal. Uh, 60 push-ups for a lot of people, I feel, is pretty difficult. Jeb blazed right through them, and I'm sure he's gonna do the same thing today. But, um, and I think we heard Miranda, her tips also, where the push-ups right. can be a bit difficult for this one. That's right, so she did say in the tips, if you guys listened to that section there, if you're doing this workout again, take a moment to look at it and realize, oh, where did I get stuck last time? What part slowed me down? What was my obstacle in this one? Did I peacock? 
Did I, you know, uh, overestimate it? Did I underestimate it? So she did a great job of breaking it down, but we're gonna break it down again for you guys one more time. For the 60 deadlifts, I honestly think you should knock those out pretty quickly in as few sets as possible. And the reason why is the movement that moves very, very quickly, right? There's a couple movements in this workout that move very quickly, and that's the deadlift, that's the air squat, that is the power clean, and the, the front and the uh, air squat and the front squat as well. I mean, they actually all do, but it's how efficient you are and how you can breathe during certain movements. So the deadlift, you can easily just drop it, pick it back up, and just keep moving right away. Right? Yeah, yeah. The air squats, that's somewhere where you can kind of tone it back a little bit, catch your breath over the first maybe 15 to 20 reps, and then kind of pick up momentum and just find a groove and chip away at those, right? All you have to do is kind of shake the legs out and then get back into it. When you get to the push-ups, that's the section there, guys, where you gotta expect that you're gonna slow down just a little bit, because if you're an animal and you can do 60 push-ups unbroken, well, wow, wow, you're a unicorn. <laughs> but for most of us, I honestly think approaching it every three to five reps for the push-ups, given that you have shouldered overhead to close out this workout, and the last thing you wanna do is blow up those shoulders when you get to that point there. And you don't wanna you know, spike your heart rate even on the push-ups by moving super fast through that section. Yeah. Focus on quality reps, three to five reps at a time, take a big breath, and then right back to it. Because the other thing that could happen in the push-up section for many of us is once that muscle f uh, fatigue sets in, that muscle failure, that is not a good thing early really on in the workout. It gets really hard. You don't want to put yourself in a position where you're doing si singles or doubles on purpose, because that are, are not on purpose, because that is n not a good sign. <laughs> not a good sign. Not a good sign at all. Jeb, in the last round um, of push-ups, when he did this the first time, he knocked out a huge set right in the beginning and then had to cut down his sets quite a bit. He actually did say, though, he thinks he's going to go for that same rep scheme this time. So we'll see if he can stick to that or not. Cool. On the power clean section, guys, I do think that you guys should try to knock those out. Honestly, this is my rep scheme that I feel like would really work for this workout. And this applies for the power clean the front squat and the shoulder overhead. You can either go a five by six or six sets of five. One or the other, choose a weight that allows you to do that with very short recovery. If for some reason you're like, cool, I've done three to four sets and I feel like I can go a bigger set, then knock out a bigger set and then finish it off nice and strong. He's on the air squats. Oh, he's moving on. Wow, Great. he is right on pace with his previous self. He was switching at the same exact time. I will say, though, last time, I didn't tell him, but he did 61 air squats last oh, wow. time. So I hope he counted correctly this time. I hope so. <laughs> All right, one thing that on the push-ups, guys, and I'm going to kind of call out uh, gentlemen on this one, make sure you guys fully lock out those elbows. Here's the thing. I'm guilty of it at times as well. I have to actually focus on locking out my elbows with that full extension. Um, so again, it's just slow it down just a little bit, just to focus on that good quality form, okay? Yeah, guys, quality form, right, No Jim? bro reps, no bro reps on this. <laughs> look at those, those look solid. Moving his whole body up and down in one motion, which is great. Sometimes people leave the hips up and only move the upper body, and that's really weird. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't right? do that. Don't do that. <laughs> move. Yeah, they're they look great. great. They're looking great. Move the body in, in a whole unit, you know, and focus on those good reps. I have a feeling at one point Jeb in his life has like woken up and been like, I'm going to do 100 push ups. Oh, so right here, you can already see how like his, his arms are shaking, guys. I oh, mean, yeah. I don't know what set he's on, but you know, if that, that would have been me, I would have kind of broke a little bit earlier, actually, and then just kind of recovered a bit. Oh, okay. But he feels he feels confident with this. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I asked him beforehand, and he did say he's going to try to kind of hit the same rep scheme as last time. Last time he went 30, 10, 10. Five, five. Looks like he's going for about that same idea right now. Yeah, I would have broke up earlier because oh, right I here the, the pace is a little bit <laughs> on, on the slower side, but it's okay. I feel confident in Jeb. Oh yeah, Jeb, Jeb's got this for sure. You know? If I had tried to hit 30 in the beginning though, I would uh, I would actually probably have to stop the workout after those 30 push-ups and just, you know, go for a walk, uh, eat a protein bar. Always eating. <laughs> drink some carbs. <laughs> get a smoothie, and then come back and finish the workout later. Oh man, okay. Nice and smooth reps. Here we go. Let's see how he's gonna break up these power cleans. You know, so, you know, some people, if you guys are really efficient with singles, try that, you can always go for that. But again, I think that you should choose a weight that allows you to do either six sets of five or five sets of six, no problem. Right now, he is just a little bit behind his former self by a few reps. 
Jab's got a long, long ways to travel here. He's a tall man. Oh, okay, I don't know what's that. What was that? Do you know what he hit? I think he hit six. Cool. So this is one of those guys who are obviously, depending on the version that you guys end up doing, you know, they're all, uh, you know, a great approach. You know, each one of them is going to hit you a little bit differently. And then for the sandbag, you know, the deadlifts, are, you know, are a little bit easier. You can move through that section a little bit quicker. And on the power cleans where it gets a little, I think the sandbag is the least um, hardest of all the versions for this mm -hmm. specific workout here. Cool. That's the one I did last time. Got uh, it. Too Got easy, it. I see. Yikes. I see. I see. Okay. <laughs> so um, the dumbbells at that one, you know, when it, especially when it comes to the... Um, the power, you know, when you get to the 30, 30, 30 section, ouch, the dumbbells will hit you hard for sure, especially on the shouldered overhead. Um, but the barbell, I think this is a, for sure, the most challenging one will be the, um, with the barbell for this section here. So what advice would you have for people who say, didn't quite make the, um, the recommended goal time? Oh, but the question is, is it the same rib scheme for the dumbbells? I, I believe so, yes. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, do, you do you have any advice for Oh, yes, for I people? remember. Didn't Molly... Uh, I feel like we saw Miranda and Molly tackle this workout together, and that was really fun to see, actually, to see the different approaches. Or no, yeah. it might have been... Uh, I don't know. I'm all over the place right now. I feel <laughs> like it was possibly them. Uh, Molly had come up for that trip. I but. mean, the, the one version that Jeb did, it was Jeb was doing barbell, Carolina was doing dumbbell. Nice. And I was doing sandbag. Um, and I'm pretty sure the rep scheme was the same. Nice, Jeb's holding on to it, guys. Cool. Quick breaks. Okay. Let's see how he's recovering pretty quickly. He's moving well. It, you know, I, I think that sometimes when you guys get to a point like this, maybe cut it down into smaller sets if you have to. Move a little bit quicker, smaller sets. Mm -hmm. Get through this workout yeah. a little bit more efficiently. I would have broke there, to be honest. <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, so let's talk about real quick what advice you might have for people who weren't able to hit the, the goal range last time. So if you didn't hit the goal range last time, I do think that maybe you should drop and wait a little bit. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends, right? Like if, if depends on where you got stuck. If you got stuck in the push-up portion, mm -hmm. well then maybe just drop to your knees and do knee push-ups. And, and if that's the place that you ended up getting sucked up in, then I think that was the obstacle. Okay. But if it was like a weight issue and the push-up, you were able to fly through the push-ups and the squats, and you got really wrecked on the barbell or on the dumbbells, well then adjust the weight and go a little bit lower on the weight. Okay. So I can't really say, oh, well then just, you know, go lighter or this or that. It depends. If you got stuck on the push-ups, go to your knees. If you got stuck on the barbell portion, lower the weight. Got it. What about um, the opposite? If someone like really crushed it last time? Then it's time for you to up the weight for sure. It's time for you to up the weight and challenge yourself a little bit more. I think actually I fell into this problem I think I ended up using 135 yeah. and uh, I fell under 10 minutes, I think. So for me, when I approach this workout again, I'm gonna feel like it's okay to go 155 and just stick within that window of the goal time. I know it's gonna really hurt. Yeah, it's gonna hurt. You know, but I, but knowing that, I'm gonna plan on hitting bigger breaks um, on the power clean front squat and shoulder to overhead and be okay with that. Would you ever recommend for someone who... Um, and the reason I say that is because I already I felt like I went really quickly with the 135 barbell. There's no point. I don't, I don't feel the need to wreck myself again going trying to go faster. When, and at this point, given the, what the goal time was given, I challenge myself by going heavier and sticking within that. Because I feel like you know, that, that, that'll be a good workout as well. If someone was, uh, say, better at front squats sure. in terms of weight than they are in a uh, shoulder to overhead. Would it be okay for them to use two separate weights? I mean, that's gonna be one of those where on, uh, honestly, so you're saying if they're better at front squats than shoulder so, to overhead? So yeah, so say they can, you know, with a set of 25 pound dumbbells, they oh, can I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. easily, but shoulder to overhead is really rough for them because sure. they use two separate weights. So there's two ways you can approach this, right? And it depends on what your goal is for the workout. But I would say, that sure, you could either go the route of, you know, um, this is the fitness freedom and be like, you know what? I'm just gonna go uh, the, uh, the prescribed weight on the front squats and go a little bit lighter on the shoulder to overhead. Um, you know, if you stick within the goal time, great. And then there's the approach of, you know, well, it, it, again, it all depends on what you're getting because if you're going way past the goal time trying to make this adjustment, then it's not worth it, right? Then just go yeah. lighter on the front squats and, you know, get it within the goal time. That for, is the ultimate goal there. 
okay? If you're achieving that and you're like, you know what, I wanna play around with this a little bit, then those are the answers. You just, you know, yeah, go a little bit heavier and still try to stick within the goal time um, on the front squats and then make the adjustment on the shoulder to overhead or try to go faster. Yeah. Right? Again, it all depends on what you're trying to achieve here. There's no wrong answer, guys. I like I like when there's no wrong answer. There's no wrong answer. All right, Jeb is on the front squats. I'm still uh, I'm not sure where uh, what's what rep he's on at the moment, but how is he looking as opposed to last time? Um, he's he's a little behind his prior self. Okay. Um, oh, he's on the shoulder overhead. Okay, cool. Here we go. Two. Uh, Did he do bigger sets on the push-ups this time around? Uh, I I don't think so. I think he was pretty much hitting the same the same uh, rep scheme. Okay. So Jeb's doing shoulder overhead with with the push jerk. Um, which is great. If you're efficient with the push jerk, definitely push jerk all day. But if it's one of those movements where you struggle and you have to think way too much on how to do that movement, just go push press and break up more frequently. Okay. Again, try to you know try to stick with sets of five at this point. Six sets of five seems to be a good, hopefully a good approach here. The the bummer about the shoulder to overhead is that every time you drop it, you have to pick it up again. Okay, he's holding fives. Here's a big tip here, especially on the shoulder overhead. Don't rush that movement because if you rush it, you're gonna gas yourself, you're gonna spike your heart rate. If you're holding your breath on that movement, your heart rate's gonna go through the roof and you're gonna feel like these 30 reps are gonna take forever and it's gonna be harder for you to recover. So smooth is fast. And the reason we say that, focus on your breathing, that way you're paying attention to what you're doing and you'll be really efficient and it'll be easier for you to recover. Exhale there, inhale, exhale there. The reason okay. I say inhale on the, on the catch so that way you're bracing that midline so that way you're receiving that weight and in a strong, really strong position, okay? The last thing we want is for you to exhale on that catch. And that is that is not good prime position not to right be catching. Place. No, not at all. So it looks like it looks like previous Jeb is finished. Oh, uh, it had Jeb to have been his done. breakfast. I, I'm thinking he ate too big of a breakfast. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> I think he was fasting last time. <laughs> Last time he actually did say, um, I asked him beforehand uh, if he prefers a winter workout or a summer workout. And he actually said he prefers a winter workout. Nice. He gets too warm and he doesn't feel quite as good. Wait, what? He gets too warm? Yeah, so like he, he likes, he prefers to work out in the winter. So Because he gets He's too, cooler. He's and cooler. if he gets out, he gets too warm. Oh, he, he gets warm. too warm in summertime. Yeah. So he said it's a little bit too warm for him today. I see. And he prefers to work out in the winter. I see, I see. Salvi agreed. I think it's like um, part of the Spidey yeah, I mean, Guy I, Gang. Yeah, right? I, I appreciate working out on some joggers for sure. Yeah. Personally. Maximum my, blood flow while staying cool. <laughs> sure. Personally, my old lady knees don't like January. I see. So I'm, I'm expecting to do better this time around. So younger guess, Jeb, younger Jeb is definitely um, watching wiser Jeb <laughs> at the moment. Waiting for him to finish. He's cheering him on though, he's cheering him on. There it is. All right. 14.38. Nice. Final Ooh, time. Ooh, he is hurting, oh, oh he's gosh. He's pretty bad too, huh? Yeah. I'm curious to see what he's going to say here. I think it was the push-ups. You think it was the push-ups? You Absolutely. did call it straight from the push-ups. We'll, we'll see if he fatigue, agrees or yeah, not. That fatigue really on set the in. Push -ups. Yeah. Um, I, I don't I don't think it was the heat, to be honest. I'll no, say I'm cool. a little chilly right now. It feels now. good. It feels I'm good a in here. Chilled. So I think um think maybe he just wasn't trying to crush himself today. Although he looks a little bit crushed currently. He looks crushed. He looks crushed. Yeah. All right, well that was great. Let me turn on these music guys. Let's hear Jeb's coach's tips for this workout. Um and again, have fun with it. Remember it's not about performance. Choose the workout that works best for you on how you're feeling for that day, what your goals are, and get after it, all right? Round two, Gaia. Let's get it. <laughs> all right, that felt way harder than last time. I'm gonna have to check the weight I used last time. Now, um, I changed things slightly and I don't think it worked out as well, but I tried to do bigger sets with the deadlifts at the beginning and even though it felt okay, I think it made it a lot harder when I got to the front squats 
and the power cleans for sure. Um, so, yeah, not to scare anybody, but for me, that felt more challenging than the first time I did it. Um, could be a lot of reasons for that. Who knows? Honestly, like I said, I'm just happy that I showed up and that I tried it again. And, uh, you know, we love to kind of make a bigger deal about some of the vault workouts, challenge workouts, that kind of thing. But at the end of the day, it's just another workout. And if you think about it, you step back and look at it, doing the same workout two times in a year is not that much. So even if you're like, oh, I already did this, I don't wanna do it again, it's twice in a year. So it's worth your while to just do it again, have fun with it, try the same thing, try something new, but uh, that's really what it's all about, right? Consistency. So I wish I had gone faster, like I was way off my original time, like almost two minutes. So not really sure how that happened, but uh, it is what it is. I feel good, I feel pumped. So, uh, you know, no, no regrets. <laughs> so you guys enjoy this one.